find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 86. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters from Pittsburgh, PA, in the Mayhem Studios. Ready to talk some independent pro wrestling. Myself, a little bit of a video producer here with some groups, including the IWC, RWA, and Western PA documentaries like Finding Zach Gowan and something about Virgil. I wish that was the title, though, now that I think about it. No, The Legend of Virgil and his traveling merchandise table. Uh, also with me on the line, my compatriot for at least 80 five-ish of these 86 episodes he's the voice of inspire pro wrestling down there in texas he is Eamon payton yes I, I would love I, I i do agree i wish that was the title of the virtual documentary honest honestly sort that would be the that sequel or there's, that or there's something about virtual <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Uh, so we're going to be talking uh, a little uh, pro wrestling here in a moment. But first, please check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check out this and other shows about indie wrestling, about uh, about uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we're talking about all the big shows. We're talking about the John Cena's of the world, but we're also talking about the little guys too, the guys that are going to be the next John Cena's. Damn it. And I, I know we talked to one of them on our show that will be the next John Cena someday. Uh, but go check out all that stuff at uh, WrestlingMamShow.com. Subscribe on iTunes, on Stitcher, Spreaker, video on YouTube, uh, all kinds of versions of the show. And, and uh, 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 of course, check us out at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. And you can also drop us a line. I know uh, some people are already hitting us up. I know uh, some people, they want us to talk to on the show. So we're going to try to track those people down, see if they're going to be a good fit for us. 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline or good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com on your email. And big thanks to Basic Sickness, BasicSickness.com for some free music. He's the intro and outro music for this and the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thanks so much. Eamon, who do we got this week? We got a big one this week, Sorg. Uh, I'm very excited to have this guest on this week's show. Uh, we'll definitely be talking about it a bit later in the show, but also uh, Battle Wars uh, for Inspire Pro Wrestling is the big show coming up this weekend. Uh, and uh, we have the pleasure this week to talk to someone who will be on that event. Also, someone who was on uh, the big event from last weekend, which was the King of Trios 2015 tournament. Uh, we'll definitely be talking a lot about that uh, and his role in the company of, Ch- of Chikara. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, the old-timey King of Swing, Dasher Hatfield. Dasher, how are you this evening? Very fine, my friends. How are you guys doing? Doing fantastic. Good, good. Like I said, very excited to have you on this week. Uh, I just started pacing around the house here on the phone. I don't know why. Every time I do one of these podcasts, I can't sit still. I was just sitting on the couch. As soon as we started talking, I just naturally stand up and start roaming around. My house goes in like a circle, so I just walk this circle until we're done chatting. Definitely. Oh, good Good to know. Get, get a little inside there. Uh, I guess uh, the best way that we start off uh, these shows, um, sort of an icebreaker question of a sort, uh, is um, obviously everyone got into this wrestling business one way or the other. Uh, so we'd like to know, what is your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? My first ever memory of watching professor, professional wrestling, I guess had to be at a carnival in about 19, I don't know, early 1900s, I suppose. We were at a carnival there, and the, the man with the big microphone was yelling out and, and inviting us on in. So we went on in and watched, watched the fellow wrestle a bear there. Another guy just wrestled a bunch of people from the audience. Uh, he, was, he offered them like $100 if they beat him, but nobody beat him. Well, that, I was sucked in ever since then. Obviously, as a kid, I played a lot more baseball. So as I got older and retired, pro wrestling for me from there. Definitely. And I guess uh, a little bit different than, than the wrestling these days, sort of that, that old-timey style. I, I, and there's some, definitely some organizations nowadays, like your old wrestling, that kind of try to reintroduce that style in a way. So it's always nice to kind of... Old wrestling just had another big show about two weeks ago. Definitely. I, I believe... Uh, Tracy Smothers and Tracy added Smothers wrestled the bear, bear, yeah. There was bears definitely. and Tracy Smothers. It was amazing. <laughs> definitely, a, definitely an all-time classic. Um, but uh, like you said, your your history with baseball and 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 you sort of went to that realm of the of the sports world. Uh, what kind of inspired you to want to become a pro wrestler? It, to me, pro wrestling was just something that, as long as I ever played baseball, I always had in my head that I wanted to do. It was just something that I said, you know, before I kick the bucket and they. I don't, I don't want to get buried in the ground, but I guess before they turned me into ash, I had to step through those ropes and see if I had what it, you know, had what it takes to make it. 
or at least just compete or put a smile on a little one's face or something. But I, I had to get through those ropes and I made it there and it's the best choice I've ever made. Awesome, definitely. And then I believe, if I if I have it right, you've been with Chikara, uh, Chikara Pro Wrestling for a little while now. Uh, I know uh, some incidents with a, a freight elevator on a, on a podcast ago go kind of uh, set things a certain way for your direction. But I believe before that you were uh, a little someone known as Creator Wrestler uh, and, and, and sort of uh, trying to find yourself, I guess, in a way you could say, uh, uh, with uh, um, your uh, various personas. Uh, uh, what was it like sort of getting into uh, Chikara and if you have any memories sort of of, of your time starting there? Uh, I guess all, all those times, I guess, were kind of really frustrating to, you know, like you said, to find myself and find, you know, where I, I felt at home. Um, and we left it up to the good people of Chikara, who for the longest time was kind of kind of a little rough at first there. You know, Moscow, the communist bovine or Oldsmo breakfast. But then once we found good old Dasher, that was that was home for me, brother. Definitely, and it seems like it's. Yeah, I, I believe at the end uh, of the year, you obviously the creator wrestler uh, is supposed to be renewed again. But it seemed everyone wanted you to uh, stick around, which is always a good sign. Oh, absolutely! I had fans that were bringing the same Dasher signs there. Um, of course, I wanted Dasher to stick around. Definitely, uh, and and you went on to kind of have a big run in Chicago. Pro. Obviously, you're sort of one of the. Uh, the mainstays with the company nowadays, uh, and and you've had uh, a lot of great runs with the throwbacks that we actually not too long ago had a uh, Sugar Dunkerton on the show, and he definitely spoke very highly of his time working with you, uh, and then obviously your stuff now with Mister Touchdown. Um, for those, obviously, uh, I, I would assume a lot of listeners know about Chikara, but what's it like? Sort of, has it been like sort of rising the ranks in that organization? I'm sorry, what was the last part of that question? Uh, what's it been like, sort of your sort of your time in Jakar? Just uh, obviously, you've risen up the ranks a great deal uh, in your time there. Uh, my time in Jakar, I wouldn't trade it for. Oh, um, I'm starting to hear an echo there for a minute. Yeah, there's a little bit. Of um, an echo. But yeah, my time in Jakar, I wouldn't trade for the world. Um, with the greatest fans in the world, I love how the company's run. Um, it's definitely a place, like you said, I've I've climbed the ranks there. Um, still got a little ways to go, but it's a place where hard work is is noticed and rewarded. The harder you're working, uh, the better you're treated, um, the better matches you're given. But those, te- those things are definitely recognized and you can see it with the guys who have climbed the ranks there and guys who have kind of fizzled their way out. The guys who are showing up and putting in the work day in and day out are the guys who get the rewards and that's the way it should be. Definitely. Absolutely. And then, like we mentioned before, you uh, we're coming off of uh, King of Trios weekend. Uh, obviously, the big uh, three-night uh, 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 trios tournament. Uh, uh, I believe, you, unfortunately, you got knocked out in the first round uh, uh, due to Kevin Condren's uh, Battleborn. Um, but uh, obviously, how, how was that weekend for you? Uh, obviously, uh, I believe around this time last year, we talked to Bryce about uh, the weekend of trios last year. Uh, what's it been like, uh, you know, a couple days removed from uh, uh, King of Trios? King of Trios is always the most magical weekend for myself, anyway. Um, because a lot of times, you know, Chikar shows, we travel all around and you get to meet people from that area. And there are a handful of people that it seems no matter where we go, they, they end up showing up there. Whether it be Chicago or North Carolina or Florida or Alabama or wherever else we travel, Pennsylvania. There are a few people who travel just as much as we do to see these shows. Um, my favorite part about King of Trios, however, is that's the weekend where we meet Chikar fans from literally all over the world. Uh, this past weekend, I met a couple from Australia. There was a young lady from Alaska who was there, multiple people from the Seattle area. I uh, met a young man from Scotland. Um, actually, this past, not this King of Trios that just happened, but the 2014 King of Trios, I met a fellow who rode his bicycle four hours to get there. So it oh, always wow. amazes me, right, how, uh, how I guess, the, the hoops that Chikara fans are willing to jump through to get to King of Trios. Absolutely. Um, and then obviously the star power also on, of that weekend as well. I mean, you had the sort of the top level names in the, in the independence right now mixed with guys like, uh, like a two cold Scorpio, you know, the BWO was there, uh, uh, Sean Waltman, Xbox one, two, three kid, whatever you want to call him, uh, on commentary, uh, the first night, uh, what's it like to sort of be around those kind of, of people? Is there, are there any people you kind of get sort of starstruck by and think, uh, you know, of, you know, the fact that you were working on shows with, with these kind of individuals? Um, believe it or not, as you know, 
when ECW was this whole big thing in the 90s, I was always a bit smitten by it just because of, uh, to me, there was a, like, much like Chikara, there was a special feeling about it. They were doing something different. So the VWO or anytime ECW guys come around for me is kind of like very special. Um, having Dreamer around or with Jerry Lynn Kane, who called Scorpio. Uh, in this case, it was the BWO. So I actually got to get in the ring and work with the BWO this past weekend. But for me, that was a dream come true. Um, anytime these guys are around, though, it's just often you kind of just like to stand near them and listen to them talk and listen to them go over things or whatever it is they do and just kind of soak up as much as you can. You kind of feel out like, hey, is this guy pretty nice and approachable? Can I go up and ask him some advice? Can I go tell him about that time I saw him do whatever it was that sticks in my mind? Um, Chavo Guerrero is probably my favorite for that. Super nice guy. Super willing to just sit down and talk to you and help you with whatever. Um, but whenever those guys are around, and you really don't know, you know, are they there? It's like Sean Waltman, one, two, three kid. He comes kind of every year now, which is awesome. But you never know. Like, is this the only time I'll ever be around this guy? I better soak up all the information I can get from him while he's here. I always like to kind of look out for that and see what I can learn. Definitely. Awesome. Uh, I believe we actually uh, uh, we have a couple questions in the chat room. Uh, well over at uh, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so, two questions from our good friend Tony Garza, uh, who asks, uh, from all the new guys that came in for King of Trios, who you like, Who did you like more and hope to see back in Chikara? Um, this past weekend, uh, Trent Seven's probably my favorite. I got to, uh, actually when we were in England, I stayed at his house for a couple of days. Uh, fantastic fellow, super nice guy, amazing wrestler. Um, like you said, we had gotten knocked out night two, so I got to go out and sit and watch some of the show. Or we got knocked out night one, so I got to sit and watch a lot of night two. Um, so I got to see all the, the English fellows in action. They're all very amazing, but Trent Seven sticks out to me as as the most impressive, I feel. And one, hell, awesome. one heck of a guy as well. Yeah, I believe uh, I believe all three of the members from the trio of, of that trio from all I saw seemed to really impress. Uh, and he also asked, um, obviously, because you had involved with the, with this man in the first round of the tournament, with all these crazy tweets from Kevin Condron, the clerk uh, clerk's dorp spear. Uh, could those Tito, could those Tidor uh, scoundrels still be around? Um, obviously, Kevin Condron uh, losing his mind, I guess, is is the best way to put it from uh, from the way his Twitter scenes after the events of trios. Yeah, I stopped, I stopped kind of following that guy on the internet. He's a bit crazy. I don't have you know space in my life for that kind of nonsense. I think he just spits stuff out and he hopes people listen. And I don't know if he wants people to follow him. I don't know if he wants people to dislike him. It's really not sure. You know, it's a shame he's a real handsome kid, but I think he's a little screwed up upstairs. They just need to chill out, maybe have a have a beer or two, or maybe. Definitely. <laughs> maybe calm him down a bit. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. And it seemed like I like you said great uh, King of Trios weekend this past weekend as well. Uh, But I definitely wanted to also bring you on because of what's going to be going on this weekend. Uh, Obviously, uh, um, the stuff I do for Inspire Pro Wrestling, I tend to bring it up a lot. But uh, uh, we got the Battle Wars 2 event that's happening, which is the uh, the second of our events uh, featuring the stars of Chikara Pro Wrestling. And and you'll be getting to come down for that uh, the second time around. Uh, uh, How are you feeling going into this weekend? Are you excited? Uh, Are you you intrigued with what's going to be going on uh, uh, this coming Sunday? I am super excited. We were down there last year, and um, with the exception of, like, Chikara shows, which I absolutely love, this is probably my favorite place I've ever been, never gone to. The crowds are absolutely amazing. Uh, the management is excellent. The company is very professionally run. Um, my buddy Steve O'Reno gets to be on my team, or I get to be on his team, really, this weekend. That's his home turf, me and Mr. Touchdown. So I'm super excited. Um, Austin was such a cool city. We got to roam around last time. I randomly met McLovin in a bar. So that was kind of cool. I don't know if that'll happen again, whoever McLovin happens to be these days. Um, but that happened. Uh, it was absolutely one of the best times I've ever had in my life. I remember even leaving there last time and riding on the airplane with Mr. Rensberg and just they were already talking about, like, hey, we got to go back down there. That was a lot of fun. Like, let's go back down really soon. Um, so I'm super excited to go down. Definitely. We're very excited to have you guys down as well. Uh, definitely one of our, our best weekends. And uh, I'm sure... This coming Sunday will be no different. Um, oh, we're ab- so, yeah. absolutely! You guys, the, book, the, the best of the best. I mean, if you if I had to pick the three best wrestlers in Chikara, you got Fire and Hollow Wicked and, and Chuck Taylor, and they're all coming. So that's Definitely. pretty off. Definitely. Uh, luckily, I, I believe me, uh, us and Chikara also share the, share the same uh, 
a wellness policy uh, if uh, Orange <laughs> Cassidy is making his way down as well. Um, but yeah. Um, I the best be, wrestler in Chikara, not Orange Cassidy. That's true. <laughs> should be a very interesting weekend with him as well. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, going into some of our regular questions that we have on the show that we ask uh, all of our guests, uh, sort of to pick your brain in a sense. Um, uh, as far as wrestling goes, what do you, is there anything that you're watching currently and sort of either for studying purposes or for recreation, is there anything that you sort of have your eye on at the moment? Um, the two things I've been watching on a, a pretty adamant basis, I think everyone's watching NXT right now. NXT is, I mean, probably the hottest thing going in wrestling. Um, I'm a big Enzo Amore fan. I don't know why. doesn't make any sense, but I love that guy. <laughs> um, and I've been watching a lot of, uh, like, 93, 94, 95 WTW right now. Um, a lot of William Regal. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was going to say WCW because I know you do bust out of the, the jackhammer once in a while. I don't know if you're studying Goldberg tapes, but uh, <laughs> you never know. Uh, I'm um, not studying a little Goldberg in my day. <laughs> awesome. Um, and, and the final question we have, uh, obviously, uh, this being the Indie Mayhem show, we kind of touch on a lot of the indie wrestling scene and, and sort of indie wrestling as a whole. Uh, so in your opinion, uh, in your time that you've spent in indie wrestling, what in your opinion – is the best thing and the worst thing about independent wrestling? The best thing and the worst thing about indie wrestling. Um, okay, let me start the worst, I guess. The worst thing, I, uh, the biggest problem I have sometimes with indie wrestling are guys who are in the locker room are just not there to have fun. Like, I don't know, I can't, I can't I guess, put my finger on exactly why they're there. Um, it's indie wrestling, nobody's making a million dollars. So if you're not really there to have a good time and enjoy wrestling for really what it is at its core, then... I kind of think you're wasting a lot of people's time and that's a spot on the show somebody else could have. Um, like those guys who walk around and kind of kind of feel that the business owes them something, whether they've been wrestling 20 years or they've been wrestling two years and they, they think they've done a million things. Um, those guys really kind of tick me off. They just come and have a good time, put on a great match. And to me, those guys, the guys who are in the ring and having fun seem to be, especially nowadays, the guys who are getting signed and looked at by WWE. You look at um, I know Gargano down wrestling the next team. Now that guy always looks like he's having a good time. Um, a lot of the other guys, obviously Sami Zayn, always just looks like he's having fun in the ring and enjoying what he's doing. Um, guys that have the positive attitude, those are guys getting the rewards. I think those other guys are the ones that drive me nuts. Um, the best thing I think about indie wrestling right now is just the level of competition. The indie wrestling level, I mean, everywhere you go, there's amazing shows. You can go to a show just started a few months ago and there's some guys on that show who are really working hard. Um, I think to me that's the power of the internet or WWE network or any other instant type of, you can watch wrestling from all over the world instantly on just about any device nowadays. So you have so much to study from and so much to pull from. So it just raises everybody's game and everybody's creativity. I think that's really awesome. Awesome. Definitely. Uh, uh, before we also head off, we have one more question from the chat room from our, our good friend, Mad Mike. Uh, obviously, you mentioned that you, you got your eye on NXT. Uh, he wanted to know what you thought of the VOD villains. Um, I really like the mustache one. <laughs> Simon, is, I believe his name's Simon. Yes. <laughs> that, that's the fellow who I think, at first I wasn't, I wasn't too crazy on him. Um, I think I met him somewhere a long, long time ago. Um, he looks really familiar to me. But he's a fellow who, every single time those guys step in the ring, you can tell that guy's really working hard, and he gets better every time. And he always is showing me something new that I've never seen before. Um, so I really like that about him. You can tell he's really working hard at his craft. And he's really perfected, and he's doing a great job. Absolutely. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, so thank you very much, Dasher, for joining us on this week's show. It was a pleasure to have you on. Um, hey, man, it's a pleasure you, talking with you. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of days. Definitely, absolutely. Uh, if you have any other upcoming events that you would like to uh, plug, or if people can follow you on social media and check you and check you out there, uh, feel free to plug away. Um, I mean, the Chikara train is rolling all over the place in the next two and a half months. The end of this month, we're heading to North Carolina and Virginia. Two weeks later, we will be heading towards New York and Massachusetts. A few weeks after that, there's like a crazy four day trip that goes from Minnesota to. Uh, somewhere in Ohio, I think Dayton, Ohio, and a couple stops in between. Chicago will be there in between there. But your car train's rolling everywhere. Um, I think that's social media. I'm, uh, I'm pretty active on my Twitter, at Mr. Hatfield4. 
Um, and check me out on Facebook. I'm there as well. Awesome. Definitely. And then if you've never seen Chikar, if you've never seen Dasher Hatfield and, and you've seen him on an upcoming event, be sure to check him out because you will be definitely entertained. Uh, you're so, missing out, my friends. It's crazy. It's fun. Check it out. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, so like I said, thank you very much, Tasha, for coming on. And uh, right now we're going to take a quick break and check out everything that has happened this week in Sorgatron Media. Watching these ladies on here, and I'm sorry, mm-hmm. ladies, I don't know who you are, mm-hmm. but it, it's it's interesting to see what they're doing to try to improve their appearances. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just very interesting. To watch. <laughs> it's She's like very trying fun. to make real life filters is fun to watch. We were at uh, Hardcore Homecoming, and uh, I'm sitting next to Sabu, and uh, he, he's eating tuna, and I'm like, he's like, you got a fork. And I look in the bag, and, and there's a, a New Jack, one of New Jack's forks in the bag, and it's got blood from the night before. And I'm like, yeah, but it's got blood on it. And, and before I could even say, yeah, dude, but it's got blood on it, Sabu starts eating the tuna with his fork. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, that's how wow. that's how out of your mind this business has put you. Like all the scenes are hand painted. Wow. I don't know how, but <laughs> all the scenes are hand painted. That's what they were touting. And technology for this. It really pops. It really mm-hmm. looks like a, an actual seen from a storybook but uh, if you have an idea of what we can do on our no. end in a no. call with sunny <laughs> absolutely not in a call with sunny no no i just want to hear the ideas okay. and this trumps any conversation we've had because it seems that our guest has a promo video for bar jutsu um with sunny in it <laughs> um oh. And check out that and so much more. SorgatronMedia.com. It's not just for wrestling anymore. Uh, so, and thank you so much to Dasher Hatfield. It's really good. I, I'm, you know, you know, Eamon, longtime fan of Chikara. Uh, I don't get to watch enough of it, um, but uh, uh, attended a few shows, one with you, and it's awesome that you guys get to, to hang with the Chikara guys um, at Inspire Pro Wrestling. The second year uh, that you guys have been doing this Battle Wars, and I know you guys have a lot of stuff coming up with it. Definitely. Uh, uh, fun stuff is going to be happening this weekend uh, for that event. Uh, that last year was one of our biggest events that we ever drew. It was um, a really popular event for us, and uh, it's rightfully so because I think up and down the show was really phenomenal. And from the way the car is looking this time around, I think there's a chance that we can top it. Um, I'm very excited for the way things are looking out for this, uh, this car this year. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, obviously, the talents that will be coming down for Chikara include Jasher Hatfield as well as uh, Mr. Touchdown, uh, Fire Ant, uh, Chuck Taylor, and Orange Cassidy of the Gentlemen's Club, and uh, the current Chikara Bro Grand Champion, Hollow Wicked, uh, along with uh, Chikara Bro Senior Official and friend of the uh, Indie Mayhem Show, Bryce Remsburg, which I'm very excited about as well. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about this weekend. Uh, there's going to be some really great matches on that card. The main event is... Uh, sort of in the tradition of Battle Wars, the champion versus champion match with our Inspire Pro champion, our new champion, Absolute Ricky Starks, uh, against Hollow Wicked. Uh, there's a big uh, trios match featuring uh, 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 Steve Arena, who's another friend of the show, teaming with the Throwbacks, who, we, who he has faced before in Inspire Pro competition. Uh, now these three together as a unit to take on uh, Davey Vega, Tim Storm, and Sammy Guevara. Uh, Matthew Palmer versus Chuck Taylor. I think is a match that everyone should be watching and everyone yeah. should keep their eyes on. Wow. Uh, Matthew Palmer, I think, is considered to be very underrated in the state of Texas. Uh, for, I mean, without a doubt. And, and and him and Chuck, I think the personalities that they, they have, it's going to be really fun. Um, another one that I think is going to be very interesting that doesn't uh, necessarily feature the Shakara talent will be the big street fight that we're having between uh, Delilah Doom and Angelus Lane, two friends of the show. Uh, they've been going at it since February. A uh, uh, lot of uh, heated, violent stuff between the two, especially on the part of Angelus Lane, uh, on the much more uh, much more kind and polite Delilah Doom. Uh, but uh, Delilah uh, may have to bring out a new side of her for this matchup, obviously. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff on this card, and, and I'm very excited that, uh, 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 to, that we're going to be able to present it. Um, uh, tickets are still available at InspireProWrestling.com. That's this Sunday, uh, September 13th at the Marquesa Holland Theater in Austin, Texas. Uh, like I said, you can go to InspireProWrestling.com to get tickets for that event. Uh, and you can also get tickets for our November 1st event, which will be our tag Kate event, 
uh, which will be a one night uh, tag team tournament to crown our first ever tag team champions, which should be very fun as well. Uh, and then after that, on November 6th through the 8th, we have Fun 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 Fest we're doing again this year. Uh, very excited to be participating in that. Uh, and all the past information for that, you can get at funfunfunfest.com. So, yeah. Wow. I love some fun stuff in the works. You guys seem to be, um, you guys have always been really big on, on kind of the theme kind of stuff. Uh, like, I'm looking at your graphic over here for Tag Kate. I know this is Rise of the Twin Dragon Connection. Is that what you're calling your tag belts or. Well, no. Uh, the, the thing I've liked recently is that uh, we've we've kind of had uh, inserted uh, taglines mm-hmm. uh, to some of, to some of the end of our uh, events. Uh, for example, Battle Wars Two is uh, uh, entitled Battle Wars Two Battle Beyond the Stars, which I, I kind of like. Um, th- there's yeah, little fun stuff we're doing there. Uh, obviously, the uh, the graphic work as well. We're very happy with from our good friend Dustin Nance, who uh, does awesome stuff for us. Um, but we're kind of nerds, obviously, and we kind of you know do some different stuff like that. If you notice, Tag Cade has two Gs because it's very similar to an event uh, you may have heard of called Starcade um, that had two Rs. But uh, yeah, it's uh, we try to be a little bit different, do a little bit cooler stuff. Uh, a lot of the people that are involved uh, behind the scenes for Inspire, we're all wrestling fans that got into it one way or the other. Mm-hmm. So we're all kind of just big nerds, you know, getting the chance to sort of do what we love. So. That's amazing. Uh, go check out all that stuff. Uh, great pictures and everything on the Instagram. I'm, I'm kind of checking out those as well. Uh, again, uh, uh, Inspire Wrestling all over the place. Um, so uh, make a wave down there in Texas. Can I say the hottest promotion out of Texas these days? I don't hear about well, anybody well, else. thank you, Sora. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not it's not all you, but, you know, you're a part of it. You're, you're only the voice Aww. of it over there. Uh, so, so I, I think we should also mention, we, we just had a conversation over on wrestling mayhem show about the PWI 500, the controversial PWI 500. And, and we talk about some <laughs> weird things like our truth is over Pentagon junior or something like that. The brand surround has been talking about, right. Yep. Uh, but on our side and, 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 and I, I went and scheduled all these tweets and, 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 you know, just, just, the. Uh, Hey, give a shout outs between, you know, friends of Indie Mayhem Show, friends of Indie Wrestling dot US um, and, and uh, IWC, by the way, I need to point out again, another as if I don't put them over enough, um, you know, uh, Dan Hooven again, killing it over there and doing some great congratulatory uh, uh, pictures for uh, members of IWC that made the list as well. So uh, go check those out um, uh, and wherever they were. Guys like Ray Rowe, a friend of yours down there in Inspire Wrestling as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, you know, I, I mean, you could debate. You, you could kind of, uh, uh, you know, say what you want about their positions on this list, you know. Um, I, but I think anybody that gets in the 500 gets recognized on a national level, especially guys, you know, that we, we've dug for years, like DJ Z, like John McChesney, like Don Castle, like RJ City, like Dylan Bostic, um, to, to just see them on the list, who cares? They're getting recognized. They're in print. They're, they're, oh, yeah. they're people are, are, somebody look through that list and means like, who the heck is this RJ City guy? And maybe they'll, they'll track him back to, oh, was he doing Smash Wrestling or IWC or something like that? Um, and they'll hopefully discover a guy like that, you know? I don't know if anybody's going through mm-hmm. an entire 500 and picking out a bunch of names, but, you know, it's still something. It's still a point of recognition for a lot of these guys that may be a little younger in their career and getting recognized. So, I don't know. What are your thoughts from an indie wrestling side? I know you you got a few names on there uh, from the Inspire Pro Wrestling side, side of things as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's always cool to see people, you know, kind of break that list and, and, and get on there. Uh, I, uh, I mentioned Matthew Palmer before. I know, I believe this is his first time on the list, and I think he's at the uh, 490, I want to say. Mm-hmm. So, like, barely breaking in on that list, but still very cool. Um, uh, we've had friends of the show, like Thomas Shire uh, is on there. Uh, Carson uh, uh, made on the list. Uh, a lot of cool people. And, and like you said, I, I think people can, you know, debate the validity of the list. But uh, like you said, if it's even the smallest thing that like is an opportunity for somebody to recognize you and, and, or, or see your name and try to explore more. Uh, it's always obviously good. You know, it's, uh, there's nothing bad about it um, that can come from it. So, you know, I, I, I'm happy for everyone that definitely did make the list. Um, uh, cool to see people, you know, get that kind of, you know, no matter the size to get the recognition. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, so de- definitely go check that out. And, and, and seriously, um, I, I, you know, I've been having kind of a small campaign of if you're a fan of podcasting, 
to or so, somebody that's creating something cool, whether you like their blog or something on the internet, to say, hey, man, I dig that. And I'm trying to do it more for stuff that I listen to because I really think that mm-hmm. has a lot of weight on this kind of independent level. We're all indie, man. We're indie podcasters, indie wrestling, independent bloggers, independent, quote, journalists, whatever the case may be. Um, but I think that also counts for these wrestlers. So if you saw a guy that you're digging, if you're j- digging a guy like an RJ City, like a Dalton Castle, and you are a guy, somebody that bought their T-shirt, somebody has followed, somebody has saw them at a show, or Matthew Palmer or whoever else is on that list that you recognize, send them a tweet. Be like, hey, man, congrats on making the PWI. You know, congrats on getting recognized in print, man, uh, from like pretty much the last <laughs> print significant journalist stuff out there you know um Mm. again you know these are guys that are traveling we've heard all the stories Uh, they're putting in the miles they're not either they're 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 busting their ass they're trying to get somewhere and some of these guys we're finally seeing get on the main stage like a ray row and ring of honor like a djz and tna and um just that extra little bit of hey man congrats is going to help maybe push them over the moon uh, to keep going. You never know. So there's my soapbox for this week. (laughs) So (laughs) when I say, and when we say support indie wrestling, it's not just buying a ticket, right? It's doing that as well. You don't have, it doesn't have to be financial. So, all right. Anything else you want to touch on before we head out of here? I think we had a great interview with Dasher Hatfield. Of of course, a lot of great conversation over on the wrestling mayhem show as well. That, that, that played over a little bit into this PWI discussion. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think I think we got it. I think we got uh, <laughs> we got all the good stuff. Yeah, all uh, the good stuff. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you uh, plugged it actually, but uh, uh, over on IndieWrestling.us, uh, just to plug it again, just in case, uh, our good friend of the mainstream media, Matt Carlins, is uh, doing a little uh, a post over there that kind of covers stuff that's happening in the world of independent wrestling. I got to read the first uh, summit of it. Looks great. Looks like you know, be, he's a guy in the mainstream media. He knows what he's doing. Um, so uh, yeah definitely go check that out uh, over at IndieWrestling.us that's right we had him on the Wrestling Mayhem show to kind of talk about briefly as well and as he talks about King of Truths I love it's a very multimedia kind of thing so there's videos there's tweets there's all kinds of stuff so there's a lot of visual it's not just like somebody wording you hey this stuff happened um, it, you can see a lot of highlights from the weekend without it being a highlight video that we stole a bunch of crap from, right? Um, so yep. thank you very much. He's a guy that does this professionally, and I'm glad that he's bringing a, a professional flair to what's going on at IndieWrestling.us. Again, a lot of visuals about uh, uh, Shine, about King of Trios, about Premier Wrestling Experience, all kinds of stuff. Expand, uh, uh, you know, NWA, NWA branded Outlaw Wrestling, which I think is down in your neck of the woods. Friends of the <laughs> show, Barbie Hayden, I'm seeing on here. Um, please go check out all, all that stuff and check out everything IndieWrestling.us, uh, where we're also posting this show as well. So maybe you found us there as well. This, this, this works with Indie Wrestling. Uh, it's not just a place for us to sell our own wares. Um, we do want it to be part of the indie wrestling conversation as well. And we hope you'll contribute to it as well. And we hope to support other, other things because the whole point of it, we're not just promoting our own friends of IWC, uh, uh, RWA that we're making and selling. We're also giving a platform for others that don't have a place to let you know about them. Three Oh or six Oh five wrestling on Ohio, vicious outcast wrestling, who by the way, and awesome. Um, they actually got on smart mark video, you know, uh, nice. which is, you know, I know our platform is small. Getting on smart work is a lot of exposure for guys like that. It's been really great for you guys at inspire pro as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they're the place to be. They're the freaking indie independent wrestling Walmart these days. And, and that's great. And I still want to get an interview with that guy over there, please. Um, I just want to, I just want to talk shop a little bit <laughs> about wrestling production <laughs> to be quite honest. Uh, so we're hoping we can uh, get that guy on as well. Um, next week, we actually, I, I don't, the name's in my email, I apologize, but we're going to be, we're scheduled to talk with somebody from ProWrestlingTees.com, uh, who, nice. again, somebody needs helping expose a lot of, uh, 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 helping that independent spirit. I know um, some of the guys, I think like Johnny Gargano and a few guys actually got to visit Pro Wrestling Tees. I saw it on our Instagram a few weeks ago. Uh, so we're going to have one of the dudes from there uh, to talk about that, talk about that movement that's going on. Uh, we have a Wrestling Mayhem Show store on there as well. A lot of friends of the show and a lot of bigger names popping up there as well, including CM Punk. 
whoever that might be. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Roddy Piper is represented on there. Um, so it's becoming more than indie wrestling, but it's great to have them beside that, I think, for exposure. So I, I can't yeah. wait to have that conversation next week here on the show. Um, Eamon, Inspire Pro Wrestling, of course, at Eamon2, please. And I don't need to play. Go check us out. Yeah. Go check us out. Show this weekend. Be there. If you were there and you step in and I'm not doing anything and, and you introduce yourself to me and you told me you watch this indie mayhem show, I will shake your hand. I, I, I can't give you anything other than be that. Very, be very, very gracious. Be very, very gracious in the long run, right? So, yes. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. Spread. If you dig the indie mayhem show, tell the world. WrestlingMayhemShow.com at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Let us know what you think. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or that hotline 412 206 WMS0. Thanks to Mystic Sickness for the music. Thank you for watching or listening. Thank you to our live chat room at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. We get started with the wrestling talk in general at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Typically, this show is at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you so much. Support Indie Wrestling. Oh. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>